And our first talk is by Eric about road spectrum and the future of transit. Thank you very much, Serino. So, uh, assuming we haven't unveiled beaming technology to materialize us from point to point, in 2049, this is what I think is going to happen. We're going to see the road system that we all know become part of what's called a city operating system. Now, in 2049, we won't be driving individual cars that we own or lease. We'll actually be using the road as a service provider of transport. It will take you to where you want to go from where you are. And we have to save our planet. We can't keep putting more cars on there. So this idea comes from the whole concept of electricity pricing. You may be aware that you can get some electricity tariffs which pay you more money when you don't use electricity. We could do the same thing for the roads. You could actually be paid for not using the road. And it looks like a trading system just like electricity does. So we would have finally a comprehensive use of a digital asset called a road spectrum which we can spice, dice, and trade, just like on a stock exchange, and stores what we call a crypto asset. Every city will now resemble what an airport does. When you go to an airport, the plane's actually paying to land at the airport, and that's called air space time pricing. Why don't we do that on land and call that road space time pricing? So if a road was no longer an operating cost for city, but instead a source of revenue, we could actually pay people who are less wealthy and less better off because they haven't got a job, without actually being communists. We could actually redistribute by lack of use. And we'd actually be pricing the seats in the same way as you can do on things like seat frog or when you buy a train uh, ticket with Virgin Trains. Depending on time of day you go, it's a different price. You would literally be trading your use of the road in the same way. And that happens, as I said, with electricity markets. So when you take a train trip, I'm sure you actually just buy a seat on a train. You don't go back to your garage, take out your train, drive your train onto the track. When you get to your destination, park your train, then come back to it later. That'd be ridiculous, but we do that with cars. Now, we could actually finance a cheaper train system so everybody could use the train more effectively because right now, even the train buses take planes because the train is so expensive. And there's something clearly wrong with this. So we need a new and equitable way to finance our road system so it doesn't destroy our economy, but we can also make it a way to actually create value for people who use it less than a certain minimum, okay? Most cars, we only use them one hour a day, and for most trips, it's 90% of the time, most trips only have one passenger in. If instead of using our Raspberry Pis and other devices to do Bitcoin mining, what we do is we do congestion mining. We use the same idea to work out the best way to move the largest number of people in the smallest amount of vehicles, and then you get payment for that. That would change our logistics industry. We'd move more freight, we'd move more people. Everything would become cheaper, more equitable, without any government edict, without anybody saying, you've got to do this, or you've got to take money from that person and give it to that person. If you don't use the transport system as much as somebody else, not only will you not pay more, you'll get paid something because it becomes a negative asset, like a megawatt. Just as you've got megawatts, you've got megawatts. The Guardian did this four years ago. It's got even worse since. Because of the downturn in the economy, there's masses of unsold cars, four million apparently, just recently. And all these cars are sitting in parking lots around the world, rusting, not being able to be sold because nobody can use them. The way we fix that is if, in the same way, you say to those car makers, sell those cars to a private road operator who then leases them out per minute, per hour, to whoever needs them, just like the train does it. And this would result in what's called a Pareto win, where everybody in the transaction is better off from doing the transaction. Okay? Pareto is an Italian economist, I think he's Italian, who came up with the idea of 20% of effort gives 80% of results. But Pareto efficiency or optimality is the idea that you can't get a better deal than if everybody shares in a certain way so they get paid for not using the road and the people who use the road more can use it more effectively and efficiently. And this is a little XKCD type cartoon. It's not perfect, it's good enough. That's what Pareto means. It doesn't have to be perfect. Perfection in economics doesn't really work. You have to go with uh, what actually works for most people most of the time. So. Final things to say, individual liberty is my whole idea. I don't want any kind of 
government saying you have to do this or you have to do that. Let's let the market decide in a way that preserves individual liberty but allows us to use all the infrastructure we have in the most effective way. Thank you very much.